Hello and welcome to this Astranti industry analysis video of Frinter. In this video, we're going to take you through the type of industry that Frinter operates in and consider some of the key examples which you might be able to use in your exam. Before we get stuck in, it's worth considering how we should use this analysis and why we're doing it. Answering the latter question, we're doing it because the examiners say we should. They said in the examiner's report that an awareness of the industry that the business is in will help you think of the wider issues which, that might impact on decisions that you could be asked to comment on. Therefore, an excellent knowledge of the pre-scene industry will help you in your exam because you can demonstrate this knowledge and show that you understand the context of the pre-scene industry. The case study is designed to test your application of knowledge in the real world not a theoretical knowledge. This industry is des this pack is designed to help you meet that expectation and maximise your marks in the exam. But what exactly are you going to do in the exam? Well, you're told that you're a financial manager in Frinter's head office. Primarily, you're reporting to Amadou Gallo, the senior financial manager, who reports directly to the finance director. At times, you're expected to assist with the preparation of financial statements and answer queries regarding reporting. We bring this up because you're expected to answer these questions as if you really were the finance manager at Frinter. The industry analysis will help you give logical business advice and give some examples you can use to ground your answers in the real world. In this industry analysis, we've scoured the web journals and magazines for the most relevant information. We do the difficult job of collecting the right information for you, so you don't have to. So all you have to do is read this report, learn the key points and use them in your exam. So let's jump straight in to the first chapter. So we're going to start off by setting some of the context to the heating industry. And we'll be doing this by exploring some of its history. As you may remember from school, it was the Romans who invented central heating. Things have come a long way since then, and for the sake of our journey, we're going to start in the 19th century and see how developments have been made to homes and how they can be controlled. So in the 1830s, the thermostat was invented by Scottish inventor Thomas Ur. And by the 1880s, these have been developed so they could be used in people's homes. Moving into the 20th century, although there were strides being made in electrical inventions, solid fuel was still the primary source of heating. In the latter half of the 20th century, gas became the primary use of heating. And in the UK today, 85% of properties are heated using gas. Moving into the 1950s, we saw a revolution in how homes are controlled using thermostats. We saw the introduction of the T87 thermostat, the round. This was simply a dial which could be used to control the heating in a house and you may well have seen them if you go to an older house. By the 1980s, we saw the dawn of digital thermostat displays. This period also saw the rise of programmable thermostats, allowing homeowners to set when they wanted their heating to be turned on. Moving into the 21st century, in 2008, Ecobee released their first smart thermostat. These operated by connecting to the home Wi-Fi network, allowing users to remotely program their house temperature, as well as being able to access information about their bills. Ecobee weren't alone for long though, because next, the next year, Nest joined the party with their own first smart thermostat. In 2014, Nest was acquired by Google and more and more businesses have joined in the creation of smart thermostats. Moving away slightly from thermostats, in 2014 Amazon released the Amazon Echo, the first smart speaker. The advent of smart speakers allowed homeowners to control their heating by linking this with their smart thermostat. So what does this have to do with the pre-scene? 
Well, in the 1970s, Frinter produced a product to control gas-powered heating. This was in the period when there was a greater emphasis on needing thermostats to be easy and simple to use. As you would have seen, Frinter has moved with the industry. They moved from dials to LCD displays, and now they've moved to smart thermostats similar to Ecobee and Nest, allowing homeowners to control their house temperature through Wi-Fi. Despite several competitors, Frinter is the established leader in this market in Westland and produce products which match the current state of technology. So, they're still considered the go-to brand by housing developers. As you'll have also seen, Frinter entered the smart speaker market with the Frinter Friend. This is similar to the likes of Amazon and its closest competitor, Eveburn. Compared to the heating controller market, Frinter has only recently entered this market, following Eveburn's lead. Therefore, Frinter faces some stiff competition to compete with Eveburn and other competitors. So we're now going to move on to products and look at some of the different product ranges which are out there. So we're going to start off with the smart thermostat, one we've already touched on briefly. An example of a smart thermostat in the real world would be the Nest Learning Thermostat. This is a smart thermostat which can be controlled from a smart device and it uses artificial intelligence to learn your daily routine and preferred temperatures, adjusting the temperature accordingly. We move on to something slightly different which are smart energy meters. These are devices which receive signals from the electric panel in your house and displays energy usage and cost. An example of this would be the SSE smart meter which I've got in my kitchen at the moment. Moving on, we go to smart speakers. Um, again, we've already touched on this. There's the Amazon Echo, which this is a smart speaker which can be connected to the heating, lighting and locking systems of your house and can be controlled using voice activation. It comes with Amazon's famous Alexa software, enabling you to ask questions and act as a personal assistant. We still have some of the old style thermostats out there. Um, Honeywell do a digital non-programmable thermostat. So whilst there are more modern up-to-date examples out there, some people prefer the cheaper traditional thermostats. They can't be connected to the Wi-Fi and are similar to the dial format of thermostats we saw earlier on. We also have ventilation controllers. An example of this would be the Tado Smart AC Control V3 Plus. This is a device which allows users to control the air conditioning from their phone or tablet device. It also takes into account local weather reports and can thus change the temperature accordingly. Moving on, we have plug-in electrical heaters. For example, the Dyson Hot Cool Purifying Fan and Heater. Again, this can be controlled using a mobile app. You can control the temperature of your house using the app. It is the same function as traditional electric fans, but can also purify the air. The app can also show pollutants which have been detected in your house and shows data on air quality. Another related product are smart TVs, such as the Amazon Fire Stick. You can plug this into your TV and it offers a full range of Amazon services, but also comes with Alexa and the ability to pair up with other smart devices you may have in your house. Another related product in this area would be tablet devices, such as the Apple iPad. Users have the ability to download different applications and can use the device to link with other smart devices such as a smart speaker which can be controlled from the Apple iPad. And finally there are personal assistant applications such as Microsoft Cortana. This is an app which acts as a personal assistant and can link with your other Microsoft products. It can link with your email and help you organise your calendar and give reminders of appointments. So, there are some of the products, but who are some of the major companies in these areas? Top of the list is Amazon. 
I'm sure you've heard of them. The world's leader in smart speakers, as well as a marketplace and cloud service. There's Google Nest, which is a brand for smart devices. Then we go on to Ecobee, who make their famous smart thermostats, which we've considered. There's Hive, which are based in the UK, which also do similar things to Ecobee by creating smart thermostats. We next move on to Apple, who, as you're probably already aware, create smart devices, including speakers and mobile devices and tablets and a whole range of items. And then there is Sony. They create smart speakers, games consoles, TVs, units and music. So those are some of the competitors Frinter would have and some of the major companies in the real world which create products in this area. So how does this apply to the pre-scene? Well, as Sprinter seeks to diversify into the smart speaker market, it will face stiff competition. The research and development department concluded that Sprinter speakers should include features for organizing users' personal lives and conduct basic internet searches and online shopping. Well, as you've seen, there are lots of organizations out there which do this already. We've seen how Microsoft Cortana can act as a personal assistant. We've seen how Amazon can use their smart speakers to link to other Amazon services. Whilst these would have all been new and exciting applications a decade ago, now these are standard function on any smart device. Therefore, Frinter would encounter problems in getting its devices to stand out from the crowd, considering how saturated the market is with smart devices. Eepburn is responsible for creating the Eepfox smart speaker and is Frinter's closest competitor. Eepburn controls 60% of the smart speaker market in Westland. They've had a head start on Frinter, making it even harder for Frinter to penetrate this market. We now look at some of the product trends. Now a quick overview to the industry. In 2020, the smart thermostat market was valued at 988.7 million US dollars and in this would triple in size by 2026. 33 million homes in the US rely on smart thermostats and it's currently estimated that a quarter of total households have one. And again, this figure is estimated to grow. Turning to smart speakers. It was estimated that in 2019, 13% of UK adults owned a smart speaker. But by 2021, this had risen to 38% and it's going to continue to rise. Therefore, Frinter is in a growing market and looks to gain from the sharp increase in smart device uptake. We're also seeing trends in multi-application devices. What do we mean by this? Well, early smart thermostats were solely built around fulfilling their core function, controlling the temperature. However, as technology advanced, more recent models have more applications to them. For example, Ecobee have released the Ecobee 4, which has Amazon Alexa services built in. These can also be linked up to Spotify and Bluetooth devices to enable music streaming. Not something you'd have thought a thermostat could do 20 years ago. Products are also having more add-on devices. When someone buys a Nest thermostat, they have the option to buy additional sensors to place in their room. This sends data back to the thermostat, allowing it to change the room temperature accordingly. Frinter should consider if they can create some optional extras which can work with their existing devices. This would be similar to Eatburn's alarm system which offers additional sensors to complement the alarm system. Now on the topic of alarm systems, we're now going to look at home security. Whilst not a direct competitor, the Internet of Things market has also penetrated the home security industry with the likes of Ring Doorbell. Although they cover slightly different parts of the modern home, this could still be of interest to Frinter as they seek to expand their devices. These devices could conceivably become compatible with the Frinter Friend tablet. Another trend is the rise of smart houses. Until recently, it had always been the case that if you wanted your house to have smart devices, you had to buy them all individually. A bit of a hassle. 
However, now customers are given the option to buy homes with smart devices already built in. In the UK, there are organisations such as Truselhus, which use Scandinavian techniques to specialise in selling luxury smart homes. So as an example, they're already building homes in Essex and Cambridge. Whilst smart homes are currently the preserve of the wealthy, it's likely that as the technology becomes more widespread and easily available, more houses will be built with smart devices in. If Rinsa continues to have strong relations with building companies and tradesmen, they will be in prime position to gain contracts to build some of these smart houses. Now, while I've got your attention at the end of this video, I'd like to make you aware of the other products that Astranti sell as part of the case study course. So the first of these is a series of study text and tuition videos, and these come in two flavors. You have our written study text if you prefer learning through reading, or you can watch our videos if you're more of a visual learner. Now to start with, we have an exam technique study series, which breaks down how to succeed at various case study levels. We'll be looking at exam technique, writing style and planning that you need to nail to be successful in your case study exams. And to accompany this, we also have a revision series dedicated to the theory side of things. This is because at the case study level, there is a large amount of theory you need to be capable of using in your case study exam. So what we've done here is we've taken the key areas of the theory from the three case study levels and condensed them into a series of chapters to help focus your revision. Moving away from the more generic products and onto the products that are specific to the case study pre-scene, the first of these is the pre-scene analysis video series. First and foremost, this contains a series of videos where we break down the relevant pre-scene at the appropriate level of the qualification page by page. And throughout this video, we bring out all the key points that could be relevant for you in your exam, looking at various topics and things you might need to consider when revising for the case study. And then to supplement the pre-scene analysis, we also have two videos. We have the strategic analysis where we give a broad overview of what kind of strategy the pre-scene company is using and where it might be going in the future. And then we also look at the top 10 issues that we think this pre-scene company might be subject to and something that you may need to take into consideration when revising for the case study. We then provide an industry analysis document and a company in video. SEMA like to see you demonstrate wider industry knowledge in your exam. And this is what this industry analysis does, as it gives you the wider industry knowledge you need in order to fulfill this requirement. Essentially what it is, it's a large document that we've compiled on all the relevant industry information that we have gathered so that you don't have to do the revision yourself. And then to accompany this, we of course have a video that goes over this document to pick out some of the key points for you if you prefer that. We also produce a number of mock exams for every sitting. We write five mock exams for the first exam sitting and then we add two more supplementary mocks for the second exam sitting. We design these mocks around the specific issues relevant to the pre-scene and make them as close to the real thing as you will see in the case study exam as possible. So these are a great way to practice your exam technique and test your knowledge of the pre-scene company under timed conditions. And then to add value to this product, we also offer a marking and feedback service. So we have a range of highly skilled finance professionals working as freelance staff for us, and it is these staff that provide the marking and feedback service. So this is a great service to use in conjunction with our mock exams, as it gives you a great idea of how you're progressing in the areas you need to work on for your case study exam. And then if you're in need of extra exam practice, we also provide a more generic question pack product. So obviously there are only so many questions you could write about on a specific pre-scene. So what this question pack is, is a series of generic questions on generic scenarios that we come up with at Astranti, whereby we look to test specific topics that come up regularly in the case study exam. So if there is a particular topic you are struggling with and we've only tested once in our mocks and you'd like more practice on it, then these question packs will be a great product for you to turn to. The penultimate product on this list is a product for those of you who would like to get a full overriding picture in terms of your revision all at once, and these are our masterclasses. So these are our expert tutors who hold two masterclasses every exam sitting, and these essentially cover all key aspects that you're going to need to know for your relevant exams. So from particular theories to analyses of the pre-scene, all the way through to tips and tricks you can use in your exam. 
And finally, such is the confidence we have in the quality of our product that if you do purchase a full course from us and you unfortunately do not pass your exam using our product, then we will offer what we call a pass guarantee. So if you did not pass your exam after purchasing our full course, then you will receive the materials for the next exam sitting free of charge. Okay, thank you very much for listening to that. I hope you find our products useful. And of course, I would like to wish you the best of luck in your exam from everyone at Astrancy.